La tetralogía de Falop era anteriormente conocida como la enfermedad de los niños azules y consiste en una falta de oxigenación de los pacientes debido a que no llega suficiente sangre a las arterias pulmonares. La poca sangre que alcanza a oxigenarse no puede cubrir los requerimientos del organismo y en consecuencia los niños en vez de presentar el color rosado natural de su piel lucen azules. You said you were a carpenter? Yes. Did you go to high school? Yes, I did. Got my diploma. Planning on going to Tennessee State next year to study medicine, be a doctor. Unusual ambition for a carpenter. Well, I always wanted to be one since I was a kid. I almost uh, saved up enough money for college and then yes. slow down hit. Pick that up. Now the left hand. Good. Excuse me, Vivian. Dr. Blaylock wanted you to have this. Hey. Good night. Good night. You need to be outstanding research. Is there any ideas? Anything innovative? What about skin grafts? Testing what skin groups might take? Isn't skin merely packaging? No, it keeps out of infection. Excuse me, Dr. Blaylock, may I suggest something? Please do, I'm very suggestible. Tell us your name again? I run the Harriet Lane Dr. Clinic Tar for the Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Dr. Longmire, Dr. Okay. Kelvin, Dr. Dr. Cooley. I've read about your research. A congenitally malformed heart. Yeah. Oh, boy, women in their hearts. Vivian, would you get Dr. Tarsic a drink? What would you like? Oh, champagne would be lovely. Yeah, let's lubricate the vein of inspiration. <laughs> Go on, Dr. Tarsi. Tell us more. Well, it's something that up to now has been written off as untreatable, but I don't believe it has to be. I'm speaking of Tetralogy of Fallot. Blue babies. Yes, these children, their hearts mm. aren't failing. They're suffocating due to a blockage in the main artery to the lung. Pulmonary stenosis. The mortality rate is 100%. I've watched hundreds of cyanotic children die. I admitted a baby tonight who will certainly die simply because no one has had the courage to attempt a surgical solution to this. <laughs> well, maybe with good reason. <laughs> to put it mildly, Helen, you can't operate on the heart. That's basic. We don't have clinical proof of that. That is my point exactly. I think it's possible for us to Come do on, Denton. You have to stop the heart to perform a complicated correction in less than three minutes, and by that time, they're dead. These children are doomed. There must be a way to get more blood to the lungs. I mean, I doubt we could repair the defect in the heart walls. Without causing ventricular fibrillation. No, but maybe there's a way to avoid interfering with the greater circulation. If you can see the change in the shape of the size of the vessels as these hearts grow larger. I did necroscopies on some of my patients' hearts. 
in order to study the malformations in detail. Well, you make it liberal with hearts like these. Dr. Gross at Harvard said only God could correct a narrowing indentation of the left side of the aortic arch. Perhaps that statement says more about Harvard than it does about God. That baby back there? How long? Six months. A year at the very most. That's not right. Are you going to take this on, Doctor? Helen, I want to see all your diagnostic notes. I'll get them right away. Thank you. Put away the books, Vivian. Let's not waste any more time on theoretical crap. Let's start with experiments. Four separate defects of the heart working in combination. The pulmonary artery is constricted in the main artery before the divide diminishing blood supply to both lungs. And the hole in the septum causes the used blood to flow back into the arterial system instead of flowing through the lungs, turning the baby's blue. The baby's heart is delicate. It's a goddamn minefield. The first step is to see if we can create the blue baby condition in a dog and then come up with a plan to solve it. Dr. Blaylock in? Uh, no, he's not. I, I don't know where he is. You should check his office. That's an interesting procedure. Never seen a clamp like that before. Well, it's a small vascular work. Who'd you get it? I pieced it together from some things lying around. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Uh-huh. You're not even looking. Hmm. It's like when you come home late at night, you know? You know the feel of the room in the dark. That looks impossible. Oh, no, no. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, you see, uh, this string here, that's how you get traction on the suture, because you need a lot of exposure for the anastomosis there. Mm-hmm. I'd like to work with you sometime. Oh. Fine, Dr. Long, that'd be fine. My emergency rotation starts in 10 minutes, but I come in on Thursday. Oh, that'd be fine. You have a good day, doctor. Dr. Blaylock, could you come here, please? You're not gonna leave this. Look at the oximeter. are blue, Doctor. Vivian did it. Okay, I think we're ready to start. Okay. We're going in. the mediastinal pleura from the main left pulmonary artery. To the apex of the pleural space. I'm dissecting the pulmonary artery. Well back into the mediastinum. That's all right, Vivian. That looks fine. The right angle clamp. Yes, traction on the suture. Okay, now the clamp. Vivian made. My clamp. The one just there, uh, right here. Yes. And we're about to connect the shunt. Blood pressure 60? No, 
59. I know. I'm almost there. I'm palpating the connection. What do you feel? I can't tell if blood is flowing through the shirt. It's just too small to feel anything. Dr. Blaylock, you have to see this. Evacuate the blood in the chest cavity, Bill. Put in the chest tube. You inflating the blood along with oxygen? Ready for closure. <laughs> the Board of Regents of this, the Johns Hopkins University, in consideration of an innovative scientist, an outstanding teacher, and a skilled clinical technician, has this day awarded this honorary doctorate to Mr. Vivian Thomas. Congratulations, Dr. Thomas. Dance.